Three years from now, we'll be looking back from the moon and on to the next in a series of moon missions. And um, along the way, we will bank this moon prize uh, as an institution, as a team, we're always about winning the bigger game. It's never about the money. It's always about uh, the bigger future. The moon is in uh, uh, great flux as uh, an interest and as uh, a destination. New kinds of things, big holes in the ground, caves, uh, points that stick up near the poles which have persistent light for solar robots to hang out in. Uh, two years ago, uh, the NASA program uh, was uh, human astronauts driving around, uh, which is what we've done to date on the moon. You may recall in the times of Apollo, those were electric cars that were human driven. And um, then uh, a revolution in commercial space, including economic ways to get there, and um, this incentive of uh, a prize. Um, uh, the third in a series of prizes that have favored robotics and um, the greatest uh, prize incentive of all time uh, internationally. The, uh, the first 20 million is for driving and sending some television and then NASA's first 10 million is for landing and to do so precisely and uh, uh, by precisely, you want to see that in these former missions, uh, the error of landing might be within 20 kilometers, 10 kilometers. And NASA pays the big bonus if you can get within 100 meters. Another way of saying that is land on this building. And uh, of course, that takes the kind of technology that we'll bring to bear, distinct from how it's been done before. And you can imagine that with that prior imagery that we looked at, that there will be great new means for optical registration and for uh, controlling the long descent in a way that uh, you get into the right neighborhood. And then the last part of the landing is an elevator descent. It's coming down vertically. We decide how slowly and uh, viewing the surface and depending on how that works out, um, uh, hitting the landing and we are the ones that control the rate of that descent. We'll look a little later at how the attitude is controlled once we're down, some ramps are lowered, it's a drive off. Uh, this is the first look at uh, a four wheel skid steer. The, uh, the low sun angle and the long shadows are because we get there in the morning. And uh, just a word is that uh, once we're launched, uh, we cruise for about four days, and then all of the action happens in just a few hours right at the moon. Uh, the uh, launch vehicle uh, has uh, three parts. Uh, two of them get us up uh, on, our, on the way to the moon. They actually throw us to the moon, and that top is a clamshell that opens up. Uh, this is what we look like down in the clamshell. We are a small thing, not the, not the stages, just one piece. And so once we are released, we go the whole way to the moon as one piece. And we land as one piece. And that keeps things simple and that means we uh, have only to build this one thing and that uh, triangle thing on the top is the rover and how it rides. Um, the big thrust in the middle is from a rocket that we get surplus from the space shuttle. It's very old. And the little ones that come out the side are the ones that uh, keep us pointed where we want to point. Uh, when we build it, it weighs uh, about 500 kilograms. 
I'm a kilogram, so it'd be five of me. So it would be like, uh, it'll weigh like five or six of us. Right? And then it gets filled up with the propellant. And when it's filled up with all the fuel, then it's over two tons. Because almost all of what it takes to get to the moon is the propellant. And the robot is uh, 80 kilos. And uh, I would say the average weight of a person in this room is about 80 kilos. I'm 100. So it weighs like you. And oh, it doesn't weigh like you. When you're on the moon, it weighs one sixth of you, but it has the mass of you. So you can imagine on the moon, you, you, you're a lot lighter than how you experience yourself to be right here. Uh, it is uh, a, a deck or a thick board, a strong board, and that has uh, holes that hold these tanks, has a ring where it attaches to the rocket. These are rigid. They don't flex. And this part can crush. So we are counting on the quality of sensing and control to do a quality landing, as opposed to making a lot of flex and a lot of energy absorption for a hard hit. And that's a risk. And that's the way we do things. So we're cruising for a quarter million miles, 400,000 kilometers. Where uh, it, it, it's the same robot problem we always solve, um, the sensing and the planning and the action. But the real question is, where am I? Where am I pointed? How am I flying? And uh, some of that's done by looking at the stars and the sun. And that can, uh, and with the gyroscope, that can do a lot to tell you your orientation. It does not solve where you are. So that takes uh, a lot more of the kind of technology that we do here. And you can imagine that as you are far away from the moon, it looks the size it does here. And the closer you get, it, get, it looks bigger. And looking back at the Earth, same principle. And, uh, many ways to estimate. You never know where you are, but you estimate. This is just a little intro to the landing part. And this is a device that has the kinds of thrusters that uh, operate just in a pulse. So you can imagine that if you uh, t stand with a, a shotgun and you don't brace yourself, that'll impulse you. And uh, if you had two shotguns, you could uh, tilt yourself one way, then tilt yourself the other way, in a lot, a lot of shells. You know, you could, you could, and, and if you and if you were really good, you could probably spin yourself and that kind of thing. So uh, uh, the, these little puffs that you'll hear are. Um, let me get some sound on for you. So this thing is uh, leveling itself. Quite honest with you, uh, it's an example of uh, what is expected from this community. Because no one ever did an optically registered uh, safeguarded landing. Does anyone know why the Mars rover failed? Did one of the wheels get stuck? No, one of the wheels broke. Burnout. What else? Steering motor, burnout. What's wrong with the Mars rovers? They put the motors in the wheels. And of course, you get away with it on Mars. Because Mars is like here. You don't get away with it on the moon because it's cooking hot. It's as hot as an oven. And it's very fine, hard dust. And you can't put the motors down in the wheels. So this has that and many, many, many other great features. Only two motors, one here and one on the other side. And uh, if you look at that stick, that uh, rocker in the back, that is the whole suspension. 
And then uh, we'll say a word or two about wheels. Uh, there is a great intricacy in powering it. And so the entire electromechanical difficulty is getting the power and not cooking to death during the day and not freezing to death at night. And that's why it's shaped like it is. So uh, as you can imagine, you get more, if, the, if, that's the, if that's the sun, you get more when you're pointed into it and a little less when you're pointed away. The sun also changes. It's coming, it starts at dawn right on the horizon, and then at noon, it's up overhead. And when it's pointing right down, it doesn't matter which direction you're on. It's pointing right down on you. It, you always get the same exposure. And the belly is super hot because it's right against the hot oven. And you use the difference between the hot and the cold to make a region that's cool inside, and that's where the electronics go. And also, uh, the motors are cooled. It's chain driven. These are the motors. And to get that, so they stay clean, they're not moving, they're easy to wire. And you have to get the heat away from the motors, out. And it's done with this. By the way, did anybody bring any? Oh, we did bring some parts. My gosh, this has this gone too long. So uh, this is a clever wheel and uh, some pieces that I'll, in fact, this is the thing that carries the heat from the motor up to the cool blue. This is a, a very special battery that will uh, tolerate cryogenic freeze. So this is actually frozen with liquid nitrogen and it hibernates and it can remain hibernating for who knows how long. We've never, we've never killed it that way. And then after it's brought back, it uh, has complete capacity. Uh, we're running with uh, our Carnegie Mellon and a commercial company, and that's in part because the commercial company um, is um, uh, pursuing the launch agreement, uh, the financing, and the sustaining business that's necessary. It can't be a one-time shot. Not much of anything we ever do is a one-time shot. It's important always to be looking to the future. Um, this it, uh, represents a, a, a polar landing, which is of high interest. Um, uh, ice of all kinds, uh, water, methane, other gases, ammonia, all very interesting to the world. Resources, making things, doing things on the moon, all raised in priority since the new discoveries. We're not alone. Uh, we're, all, we're already a very interesting crowd for lots of different reasons. These are some three-dimensional glasses. One of the things we'll do on the moon uh, is uh, that because we carry stereo, we have the opportunity to return uh, 3D imagery and video. As with all these challenges, they come and go, and the community can either engage with it or watch it. Uh, my sense is that uh, this one has our name on it. I, I don't, in other words, a lot of these come and go as challenges. Uh, uh, there, there are very many things that align here um, to make it a right thing to do. And uh, with that, let's use the time.